Hi, it's Dave D again, and I've got a very brief video for you. Uh, what we're looking at right now is the configuration for a Joe cell. This is a uh, Joe cell configuration that's energizing just ordinary tap water. I did add a jigger of John Ellis water or Oregon water, as I call it, and I, I have done this before to charge the water, make energy water. And I didn't need the John Ellis water, but I added it because, uh, well, it works on my hydrogen projects. Um, so right now, this cell is producing hydrogen uh, with just tap water. And we're using almost no amps at all because there is no electrolyte in it. I'm just using a regular battery charger. To look at it, uh, I'm using less less than one amp. We're using a fraction of an amp. You can see that, I'm sure. Or can you? Let's see. Get close. Okay. Just barely over a fraction. Just over zero. Now, how this will work is it will continue to, uh, to charge the, the water and at a certain point the water will gain a surface tension and there will be bubbles that form on the top and stay there. So at the moment we have plenty of bubbles. That's the uh, Brown's gas coming up. But um, by tomorrow the whole top will be covered with bubbles. And those bubbles show that you're in a charge condition. You can actually take the charger off and the bubbles will just remain. Okay. Now this is just the uh, the water energizer. This is not the Joe cell itself. This will be the Joe cell. It's not completed yet but as you see it has a, a kind of a unique shape. It's uh, almost a perfectly formed shape uh, to hold organ energy or radiant energy or whatever everybody calls it something different who knows what the actual energy is of a Joe cell uh, I believe it is a form of radiant energy that penetrates into metals and uh, it's a very fine form of hydrogen but it's not the hydrogen gas okay now this uh, this will have four, actually three tubes within. The outside case becomes the positive, okay? And then it'll have a center negative and two neutrals. Uh, so you will have a positive lead on the outside of this case, and then the center one will have a negative lead that comes through the case. You can attach it to a little 9-volt power supply. I use this little power supply here. runs off a 9-volt battery. And it's just enough to keep keep it charged up and uh, keep the water energized. You're not producing hydrogen under this low volts. Uh, this is when it's working. It's using far less energy than what I'm using right now with the uh, the battery charger. Um, the other part of the equation, if you look down here, you will see an aluminum tube with a brass fitting and that will be mounted right on the center of the, the top of this case. That aluminum tube is important. It channels the energy and I'm going to call it Oregon energy. You can laugh if you want but uh, I think Reich was right if you want to read some of his theories. I think there is an energy. You can call it zero point energy, Oregon energy, whatever you want to call it. It actually works. Now this is important as well. At the end of this is an insulating piece of plastic tube. And that will go into a blind fitting. In other words, you'll put this directly on, say, the carburetor, but there will be no hole into the carb. It'll go right down the center, uh, but it'll just be a, it could be a bolt for that matter in the center of the carb. Uh, so there's actually no gas that passes into the carb. This is not 
HHO. This is not hydrogen power. It has nowhere to go because it's a blind fitting. Okay? That's included if you're interested in having me build you one of these. I only have 10 of these cases. They're hard to get. Um, but if you're interested, I can, I can build you one and include the, uh, the top tube and the, the case and all the tubes inside everything. $279. Shipping is free anywhere in the world. Okay? So uh, if you're interested, man, eh, just uh, let's see. Tutorbug5 at gmail.com. That's tutorbug5 at gmail.com. I'll put that up on the screen. Now, the second part of my little instructions here if you look at the uh, four cells, these are Stanley Meyer type cells. And I always had a problem. I, I know Stanley Meyer recommended connecting in series for, most, for best efficiency. And the way series connections work is that. The amps that you can use, that you consume, with just a single cell is the same. So if you have four cells, you still use, let's say you use four amps on, well, let's say one amp on one cell. If you have 20 cells, you're still going to use one amp. That's it. However, your voltage is usually around 2 volts to be effective in producing HHO. So your voltage goes up exactly multiplied by the number of cells you have. So in this case, uh, if we have uh, 12 volts and we're running four cells, it's going to be 48 volts. And that will, uh, that will be the way this thing works. So the series is actually more efficient uh, the more cells you add if you can multiply your voltage. And uh, we won't get into that here, but I think that's what he was doing. Um, VIC, voltage intensifier circuit. Yeah, maybe he did have something in in mind with that voltage intensifier circuit. Multiply the voltage, keep the amps low. Now the series connection always confused me. I hope you can see this clearly. There are two wires coming out of this cell. This one right here is marked with black tape is the negative and it as you see is on the center cell or the center tube rather of the last cell. The beginning cell is wired to the outside tube. That's the positive. Now to make this work, the positive energy comes into the outside tube, the beginner, beginning one, and the tube that's within the first one wires directly to the from the center to the outside of the next one. And then that is repeated. The inner tube is wired to the outside of the next one. The inner tube wired to the outside of the next one. The difference here is when you get to the final tube, you take the center tube is connected to negative. So you have positive in on the outside and finally it gets around. You have negative coming out on the center of the last tube. Okay. And one final uh, interesting piece of information. Stanley Meyer believed that you needed to cut down an electric loss uh, that was just dispersed through the water through an electrolyte. So I'm experimenting. I've coated the outside of these tubes with, uh, well, he was using Delrin uh, to make his resonant cavity uh, so that the outside didn't get exposed to any current. What I've done is use never wet. And I hope you can see it there. This is a Rust-Oleum product. It's fairly new and it has a base coat and a final coat. And you can buy it as a package. Both of them come together and it's not cheap. It's about $20 and so you, uh, you basically clean, make sure all these tubes are all clean only do the outside of the outside tubes. Otherwise, you, I'll have to experiment, but I don't think you'll get any uh, any draw if you uh, if you coat the insides of these tubes. So I've just coated the outside of these tubes so that the electrolyte cannot penetrate. And uh, you coat them with a base coat, three or four coats, very light ones. Let it dry about 10 minutes between coats. Then let a final dry of 30 minutes. I usually uh, I coat these in the sun 
and then I coat with a final outside coat, the final coat, and I put in two or three outside coatings and let those dry in between and then let them dry overnight. And this thing sheds water. It just repels water. It's unbelievable. And I believe it's going to increase the output or at least reduce the amount of amps required. So stay tuned for the next video on that and I will, uh, I'll test it. Um, these are untreated tubes on the right, in case you're wondering. You can see how they're shiny. The other ones uh, kind of have a dull finish. It might be the lazy man's way to get that frosty white coating that so many people talk about is absolutely necessary to success with Stanley Meyer stuff. Uh, I'm lazy, so let's see if it works. Okay, once again, if you want to get uh, your own very own Joe cell, it does not include the generator. Um, that alone would cost $279 but you, it includes the Joe cell. You can make your own energy water easily enough. I'll give you complete instructions and uh, this will cost $279, includes the tube and everything you need uh, as a Joe cell. You need to fill it with energized water and apply a very light current. Pulsed DC current is best. Okay? And uh, it's purely experimental. Joe ran cars, 20 cars on it, 20 different cars, and uh, many people have replicated his experiment. Uh, jerks like the federal government and big oil do not like this, but you know, take your chances. Uh, again, if you want it, $279. I pay the shipping. Uh, send it by PayPal tutorbug5 at gmail.com. This is Dave D. Over and out. Thanks for watching.